it uh, par four that plays out to the Mando. With some tight OBs, you have to be careful in the green, but other than that, like, I don't know, this is actually one of, one of the good holes, I think, one of the better holes in the course. It's a really good two-shot hole where, like, you have to be accurate and um, have good distance control off the tee, and then it's still a tricky approach shot, like, to the trees if you're not, like, if you don't land it perfectly in the right spot. Gotcha. Um, that was my E2 approach, and I'll be putting a PA3. Good bird. Start up here. Yeah, so I definitely like this green here as well. The right side, or the left side OB, kind of makes you play that into your upshots. Like, that's why I chose the forehands because it's going to skip away from the OB. But as well with like the variety of trees in the circle makes it a little bit challenging and uh, will really like test your accuracy as well coming into the into the green. Yeah, All right on the whole thing. Alright, on the whole two. I think I'll throw Slightly more understable. Throw, still throw the highs in here. I think this hole, really, this gap doesn't really entice too many players. Maybe a lefty because they can't really like force an Anheuser out that way. But I would say, like this hole, this this fairway isn't really that. Um, like no one will really want to go down that way. I think. I think that's like kind of the main flaw of the hole, is that so many people will just naturally just want to go out that way even just to get out in the in the fairway to have an easy approach shot but I want to throw an understable disc so it has enough time to kind of flip up and move left after the end of the flight so I'll throw this understable D1 really high in the air, but that should be a easy putt. Right. I'd give it like a, a five. I think it's it's a good idea, but the execution, I mean, it's a good, honestly, it's a good par three because it's like definitely a bonus birdie. But I mean, even me with one of the bigger arms, probably in the country is like still coming up short on a pretty good drive. And I mean, it definitely playing out here and then playing up to the basket is good. Like honestly, if you were able to even just like push back the pad or push the basket forward or just bring it up a little bit, maybe like in this little grove of trees here, that could make it a more reachable, like attainable hole, especially like then that entices the lefties to go up the middle a little bit more. If it's like kind of like closer to this middle gap. But we have a long putt, so I'll just try to give it a soft run to stay on the hillside. Ooh, now he's under it. So that also is in a bad design feature as well, the having the hillside. That, that does create like a little bit of um, stress for players in the hole. If they're putting like uphill, they might worry about that or like rolling away as well. That's not something that always is good to think about, but it also can be a flaw if it's done overly too much on a single court. So like if like say 12 or more holes are on hillsides, that gets repetitive and it loses the kind of like 
um, the kind of uniqueness of the challenge of a whole. All right, not a bad par. On to the next. Like when we were in uh, Vermont, me, it was me, Calvin, Eagle, Eric, Tina, and Zach, we were all staying together. And so we were playing uh, the two courses, the Brewster Ridge and Fox Run Meadows. And we were stuck there for two weeks because we were doing the quarantine, but luckily we could play the courses. So we played those courses probably like a good seven times each. And so we really got to like break down and like we would just come back each day and kind of like talk about what holes are good, what design ideas are are good and challenge the players in a good way and then what holes like are either too difficult, don't challenge the skill level of pros in the right way and like what holes really do and what's like a good aspect of each type of hole on those two courses because it's a good mix of like a, a nice wooded course and a really nice open course. All right, we got uphill hole. This one's a little bit tricky just because like it's blind on the other side. So it's really hard to kind of like, you, you want to be short, but if you play it for the first time and haven't really seen that, you you won't really understand that there's that danger behind the basket. So I mean, it's it's not a bad thing, because it, it'll that's something that a player who plays a tournament should practice and know before playing, but for those few people that do come out, it's something that might rub them the wrong way, kind of like me this morning, but it's all right. I know now to throw it a little bit shorter. Should be okay because I don't think it went past the hillside, but could have caught edge and rolled. So that right there, just knowing the kind of danger of the hole, is a three-stroke improvement for me. Yeah, that's a good birdie. We'll move on to the par four on hole four. I would say actually it is the better hole than the last. So probably like a six or a seven. I would say it's probably a seven. I think it's a really good hole. It's just you do you need to have the knowledge on that hole particularly, just because it is a treacherous. Because I, I didn't like I thought that just kind of gently sloped off. So I didn't think my disc was going to roll when it landed, whatever, 20 feet behind the basket this morning. I didn't think it was going to roll all the way, like 35 feet away out of bounds. But I mean, I, now that I know that, I know how to play the shot a bit better. So it comes up short and then just make the easy 25 footer or whatever. All right, this is a really tricky hole. It's a big bomb par four. It's a risk reward shot. You got the kind of big fairway um, bubble there that you can throw into and just pitch up. Me being a big arm, I like to go for this green on a nice big hyzer. So we'll probably throw probably throw a D2. Got a little bit of crosswind. So I'll probably go with this one this time. All right. That's like three feet away. That's pretty sick. Tap an eagle. But I mean, for me, I'm, I'm like one of the top tier throwers probably, yeah, in, in the country. So like, this is a shot that I can kind of take the risk of going for the eagle. Because for me, it makes sense being a long thrower. But it's a really good kind of uh, par four. because The OB is really tight with the water and also the green right beside it. So it, it baits you into throwing a shot, but it's not going to be overly punishing because you'll have like a relatively close uh, spot and bounds for your next shot. And, but it's also a good um, kind of area as well where your approach shot has to, has to kind of land 
in this thin little area if you do lay up. So it's not like a gimme birdie, perhaps. Okay, so you can easily like spike a hyzer into this area here, and then it's honestly not that much further than a jump hut up to the green for an area that should be a relatively easy part to make. So, I mean, really, really close to the basket, risk reward, but like even you can see here, if I just went even a mere three feet more left, I would have to be taking it in the same spot, but I'd be tapping in my three instead of a four. So, luckily, it had good movement control on the shot, so I'm rewarded with a nice eagle. But even if I executed a pretty good shot and was just barely left, I'm still rewarded with a birdie, which is a good design. All right, on to the next hole, hole five. On this hole, I will be throwing an H1 V2, same as I did kind of on the drive on hole one. This is a slightly gummier version, slightly less stable than the other one I threw. I'll just kind of throw it out wide and try to spike it in a little bit short of the basket because there's OB about eight feet behind the basket. Uh, all right. That's a left. Ah, it's gonna be down the hill. Alright. So that's not a bad design though. That the, the hillside kind of slopes away from the hyzer. The one kind of complaint I would say about this hole is I'd move the tee pad up here. I would say I'd move the tee pad right here. So you have like a low hyzer option, but it's not just like an easy spike around. And this way it brings the kind of trees that are supposed to be, or like I think should be utilized in this fairway a lot more because you can't just like go way out around. Because if I went out around here, I'm probably going to spike into the OB still. But they, even it's not even that much of a difference. It's like maybe a 20 foot difference, but this makes it a lot more challenging and opens up a lot more options like kind of doing a stall shot over top, a low beamer shot underneath, a forehand underneath backhand underneath or even a backhand up top so it definitely opens up some lines and some shots where that one i feel like is it's silly not to kind of just throw the hyzer and hopefully stick it near the green that's what i'd say not bad hmm. i'm thinking of a way to try to a way to run it safely because if it hides out at all, they'll likely find the out of bounds. But it's hard with this low ceiling here. So they have to kind of like move over to open up the ceiling a tiny bit. Or give it like a nose up kind of floaty shot. I think I'll probably do a combination of both. Use a little more of the ceiling here. And nose up and hide it so it's coming away from the out of bounds. Okay. Ooh. All right, not as floaty as I wanted to give it, but still right there. Yeah, I'm gonna try one more as well. Just to kind of see. Uh, a little more like it, but that kid's too much power. Get down. <laughs> yeah, so like the first one is not inbound because it's on more of the anhyzer. The second one out of bounds. I pushed a little more left. <laughs> this is far. All right. On the next pull. Mm -hmm. Is that having? Like same with kind of like having um, too many baskets on like elevated hills or mounds or something isn't a good idea. On uh, a few of the holes here, I think the OB being like less than 15 feet away from the basket is also kind of another thing that's like, okay, it's, it's a good challenge on one of the holes, but to have it on like 
six or seven holes can be like, okay, I saw that trick already. It's not as effective now. And now it's just kind of annoying me as a player to have to feel so timid on running certain putts near the greens. Like same with this hole, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it for par um, for the reason that I don't wanna put a shot anywhere near the basket because there's so much tight OB there. So I'm just gonna throw a forehand way out wide, um, keeping away from all the out of bounds and then just pitch up a jump putt or something. So I'll throw a D2 for that shot. Nice and stable one, just put it out there and then hopefully have it nice and close for an easy jump putt layup. Keep it nice and far away from the OB, but still short enough that it should be an easy approach. I do think that possibly moving the tee pad could be something that would entice more of the, the attacking play. Like something, like maybe even just moving it up to this tee box here. I know it doesn't play with the water as much, but I do honestly think that it would increase the likelihood of someone going for it. Because here, this is, this is more reachable for a lefty or someone with a really big forehand but it's also uh, a righty to kind of flip something straight down kind of play it towards that tree on the left side of the basket and just hope for a putt which will um, open a lot more people up to the challenge where I feel like a lot of people here are just kind of throwing something out into the open um, fairway and then pitching it so it'll increase people's odds to kind of make or break uh, strokes for either going for it or um, like going for it and messing up or going for it and getting the birdie as a reward. Um, some challenge to get a birdie like it shouldn't there, like there's there's something to putting in some gimme holes on the course that like you have to get and it's a make or break like that's extra pressure in a, its own little way but as well having holes here that um, will kind of gear a little more to like a pro level player it is also a really good design to kind of have some stroke separation between pros and ams because if it's if it's the same for everybody i think it's kind of a poorly designed course and it'll hurt a lot of people's um ratings and just like enjoyment of the course nice and close I don't want to make it sound like I'm just talking like a selfish touring pro that wants to himself to be able to birdie every single hole as well. If I am not enticed to go for it, I don't think anybody really will be. And if they are, they're just kind of kind of hurt themselves unless they pull off some like miraculous shot that I think is probably above their skill level. Because for me, like I could throw a hyzer flip, turn it into the green and try to like get it inside the circle. But for me, that doesn't make any sense because the fact of me turning it over too much into the OB early or just like if it flexes out, it's going to probably go too far and be in the OB long. So it doesn't make any sense. But I'm just going to give away strokes that I might not have to, but just played smart. <laughs> 